Welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Carrington and JB with me. What's good? Yo. And we got a special guest in the building here today. Bros work with numerous artists, man, including Migos, Chris Brown, Gucci, Young Thug, Lucci, OG Mako. Please welcome OG Parker. Yo, yo. What's good, bro? Good. Appreciate you pulling up, bro. Sure. Um, so you know what I mean? Uh, I know you, you know you've done some interviews and, and stuff before, so you know some uh, some of the true fans got a good idea of your story. But for those that might not know, um, you know, how did you like first get into making beats? And so like I've been making music like my whole life. Like I was in band, like in middle school, high school, all that. And then like tenth grade, my homie gave me FL Studio on a flash drive, and I just started making beats with it. Been doing it ever since. What'd you play in band? I played saxophone in middle school. Then mm-hmm. I switched to percussion. So in high school, I played like snare drum and all that shit. Mm. Now, is this something that your parents forced you to do or did you have a general interest in it? No, I love music. So I I always wanted to be in band. That's dope. That's real dope. Mm -hmm. And then you said you, um, so you you said you said in 10th grade, your homie showed you FL? Yep. Mm. And then how long did it take before you were getting placements and stuff? It took a little minute. It probably took like three or four years. Cause like at first I was like uh, in a group like with my homies. So like, it was like a singer, a rapper, and I was the producer. So we were like trying to be like the first group like that. Got you, got you. So like, we were like writing for other people and shit. Then I just started like taking the beat thing like real serious. Mm. So When you first started off producing, did you feel like you had a, um, a edge on everybody else or edge on the average producer because you came from that music background? Yeah, definitely. Cause you know what I'm saying? I can read music. So I've been playing instruments my whole life. So I knew it would like help me a lot. Mm, talk to us a little bit about that, like how important it is to be able, because, you know, a lot of producers just click in, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah. it's not really too many. I'm not going to say it's not too many real musicians out there, but it's a lot easier to not be a musician and to still make good music. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it helps. But these days, like with all these like different like programs you can use, like you really don't even have to know how to play. Like I know so many dope producers that just click in and shit, but I definitely think it helps if you're trying to cook up a lot of beats fast. Because mm. I can just, like, knock out, like, a lot of ideas. Mm. And talk to you a little bit about, um like, being able to b- flow in between genres. Like, I know you have said in previous interviews, being able to play, the more scales you know, the more chords you know, the more fluid you can be in between music. So how does that keep you from, like, just staying as, like, a just a trap producer or just a certain uh, yeah. genre producer? Yeah, definitely. Like, stuff like R&B, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, more complicated chords. So, like... Knowing how to play piano, it definitely helps when I'm trying to like switch from that or if I'm trying to do some pop stuff, you know, a lot of that stuff's like in a major key. So I can just switch like that where trap music is a lot of minor keys and a lot of dark stuff. So which one do you prefer to play? in? And I really like making everything. Oh, okay. yeah. Do you have a favorite um, scale? Like not major uh, or minor, but like it's more specific. No, nah, but my homie Deco said that we make a lot of beats in C sharp minor. So I C-sharp guess, minor. yeah, I guess that's like. I think Cash just said the same thing. Yeah. For real? I think Cash just said the exact same thing. Yeah. C sharp and D sharp, I believe. Mm. Yeah, What's I believe. your typical like beat making process look like? Uh, I really like to start a lot of ideas. So like, I probably don't even finish a lot of beats every day. Like, I like to just start a lot of de- a lot of ideas, and then I'm big on collabing. So like, my homie Smash David might send me some shit, and I might just fuck with that, or like. My homie Romano might pull up on me or Deco and mm. we cook up some shit. Like, I really just be with whatever. Like, mm. I just like to do it with anybody. Like, if I like, I'll cook up with like a upcoming producer. I feel like a lot of people are like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they only like to cook up with people they came in with. They're like popping producers, but like, I'll cook up with anybody that's dope. Mm. And so you, you typically do like melodies first, drums first? Or? I always do melodies first, though. But I seen a video where Zaytoven started a beat with some 808s, and I was like, that shit was fire. You tried it? Nah, nah. I need to, though. For, <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Yeah. What's a, like to every producer, is there like one instrument you'd recommend every producer learn before they eat, like, along with their uh, producing career is like the one instrument you would recommend? What would it be? I think that every producer should probably learn like the basics of piano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And why so? Mm, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? That's like, you have all these MIDI keyboards and like if you go to Guitar Center and shit, so like that's like a, you can get like a small one and just start start ideas with like simple notes and then you can try learning small chords, like triads and stuff mm. and then just keep keep getting better. Mm. Do you use any hardware? Um, No, I don't. No. Okay. no. Mm. Now, I know you said in band um, you had played xylophone for a little bit. Is there anything special that you learned from playing xylophone that you may not have learned from keys? Mm, I feel like a lot of the stuff that I learned in band, 
I probably implement in my music without even thinking about it. Subconscious. Yeah, right. but like I don't ever really like sit down and think like, oh, I did this shit in band. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me bring, let me tap into the band. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, I get, it, I get it. Yeah. So what was uh, what was your like first notable placement or song? Mm. I feel like the first time that like people were like, oh yeah, I heard something you produced was Love in the City with OG Mako. Mm. And then like my first radio record was 100 with Fetty Wap and K Camp. Mm. Yeah. And then how did uh how did how did you uh you know link up with OG Mako? Uh we had mutual homies. So like on the south side, like we all like from the same area. So like his homies were like, be like, oh yeah, my homie rap. He kind of popped in the city. He had that song Grow Running. Mm-hmm. And it was like kind of moving in Atlanta. So my homie was like, yeah, send him some beats. Then one night he told me to pull up and I pulled up on him and Key and they was making give him hell. Mm-hmm. And then like ever since then, mm-hmm. we was just cooking up. And then like, what was your life like at this point? Did you have a job or something like that? Or Hell yeah, I was working at the mall and I was at Georgia State. Hey, at Georgia Lennox? State. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I was mm-hmm. working at Lennox. So I was riding the bus to the train station to Georgia State and taking the train from Georgia State to work Shit. and taking the fucking train all the way from Lennox all the way back to my crib. Like, yeah. So, yeah. What was your major in, uh, when you were at Georgia State? Graphic design. Oh, for real? Mm. Hell yeah. Mm. Dang, I didn't even know they offered that. Yeah, hell yeah. You still mess around with Photoshop? Hell no. I dropped out <laughs> of Georgia State after like a year and a half. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you didn't even get nice at Photoshop? Nah, you were still learning? I'm trash. Yeah. <laughs> what why'd was you, you, Go ahead. Why'd you end up dropping out just because the music took off? Yeah, and then when Mako got signed to QC, yeah. like I was like, oh fuck it, like I'm about to go. You feel like all you made in, it. yeah, like mm-hmm. I was like, we definitely got a chance to like make something happen. So now at that time, were you making money off of um off of music, or was you still working the job at Lennox? I was definitely still working. I wasn't okay. making no money for real. Yeah. Oh okay. What kept you from like going 100 percent music instead of um working and going to college and doing music? And mom, when she kept you in school, or well, I mean, my parents made me keep a job for a minute. Mm-hmm. Then, like, when I started, like, getting a little ASCAP checks and little stuff coming in, like, they saw that, like, I had potential to actually, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, make some work from music. So they let me quit. And then just for the next, like, six months to a year, I just went hard, like, real hard. They still press you about finishing school? Yeah. yeah Every time I go home, my mom be like, you still got it. You should get a degree. Yeah. You, <laughs> your, your, pop, your grandpa, she plays, he, yeah. he's a professor at Morehouse, right? Yep. Yeah. So now, like, what goes through your mind when they say that, like? Hell no. Nah. That's what I'm saying, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not against it because, you know what I'm saying, education like a great thing. So, like, maybe in the future I might go, yeah. but as of right now, no. Nah. I'd be like, man, you realize all these millionaires I can, <laughs> I can call right now and get to work with? Yeah, like, facts. Hell, you know, I get that. Yeah. Um. So then how long after OG Mecco signed did you kind of, um, you know, join the QC? Probably like a year or two, like, you know what I'm saying, it just had to make sense. So, like, I just kept working with, like, Cinco, Migos, and everybody. Yeah. And, one day, P and Coach K just pulled me to the side and was like, we need to figure something out. Was that something you were waiting for? Or, like, was it a surprise you? Did you kind of expect it? Uh, I mean, I definitely knew it was possible, but I knew I had to have some records, you know what I'm saying, some bigger records with their artists for it to make sense. Yeah. So once I started getting, like, you know what I'm saying, like the records that they started pushing the radio and stuff like that, I knew that they would, like, probably give us the opportunity, so. Mm-hmm. What kept you from just staying at, or just being known as OG Park or OG Mako's producer? Like, why? How were you able to go and work with all these other artists? I mean, you know what I'm saying? He never really cared about that. So, like, I know some artists might have been right. like, oh, no, nah, you can't give beats to everybody else. Right. But, no, nah, he never cared. Like, I would pull up, Mako would be recording, I'd walk out the room and go give Quavo some beats, then give Rich Kid some beats. Like, mm. it was never no issue. And they kind of have two different sounds. So, it wasn't like the beats that Mako <laughs> wanted, Quavo wanted anyways. Right, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So it was always it was cool. Mm. So what's the what's the like the daily vibe like? Um, you know what I mean like you you go to the QC daily or like what's your what's your typical daily lifestyle? Uh, well, I'm kind of like a stay at home producer. Like I don't know. Like I'm always at the crib cooking up. But like these days, like they always on the road. So I probably mm. see little baby and amigos like once a month or something. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? They got shows every day. Mm. So, but like uh, some of the newer artists like Collision and stuff. Like mm. I lock in with him. Or like Marlo, you know what I'm saying? But the like the top tier artists, they're usually going like Yachty and them. Mm. Yeah. So like what other stuff do you do throughout the day that like maybe it doesn't have anything to do with music? Man, all I really do is like hoop, play the game, just make beats for them. I be chilling. What, what you playing? playing? Oh. What you playing nowadays? Fortnite. Fortnite. Call of Duty, <laughs> 2K, that type of shit. You get into PUBG? 
Nah, nah, no PUBG or Fortnite over that every day. What about that new one? The new uh, it's like free, like Fortnite. It's called Palat. Maybe we were oh, playing yeah. it. Pilates. I don't know Pilates. 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 You ever heard of it? No, nah. Pilates is the workout. Not Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> That's what somebody said. Aladdin. It's like Aladdin, but with a P or something like that. I don't know. Pilates. <laughs> what is it like? Like it's like I, World of Warcraft and um and Fortnite. And Fortnite mix. Like you ride on a horse. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Shooting, like. But it's a free game. Like, I, you know, like how they got the streaming where you can watch people play games. Oh, yeah. So I was on there and it was like the number one stream game. I'm like, oh, it's free. Let me try it. But it's weird. I, c- I couldn't really figure it out. <laughs> Hell, I'm going to look it up. Yeah. Have you played Fortnite, though? You probably, you probably yeah. messed with it. Yeah. Hell, yeah. You got any uh, solo wins in Fortnite? Hell yeah. Man. For real? Oh, you nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, you nice. Yeah. You nice, nice. That's dope, that's dope. And with um with all the competition that like um at QC, talk a little bit about like, you know, there's so many producers at the studio. Like what separates you from all the other producers? I mean, I feel like every producer got their own sound. So like, you know what I'm saying? It's really not too many producers there though. It really just mm-hmm. be like me and Quay, you know, cook that shit up Quay. So right. You know what I'm saying? He do a lot of stuff with Lil Baby and stuff like that. So we make beats together a lot and shit too. So it's never, I never really felt like it was any competition mm-hmm. or nothing like that. Yeah, I've got any collab placements together? Uh, no, nah, not yet. That's but we just cooked up like a five pack like the other week. So something going to come from it. Mm. Have you um have you been introduced to Tour Life at QC? Mm-mm. You never been on tour yet? Mm-mm. Not yet. You don't want no parts? I don't know. Well, you know. say you like being at home and shit, yeah. and I feel that. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know, though. What have you learned from just being around, like, Coach and P? I mean, just to stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? They definitely stay on me to always be working, always cooking up. Like, they be like, you still sending beats to everybody, making sure I'm still working with all the artists. Yeah. So I'm going to answer something. A lot of producers, they come on here and they refrain from um, using loops and stuff like that. They talk down on using loops. I see... We work with like I see you working with Hitmaker, like a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Y'all use loops from like the Martians, you know, a lot Facts. of people. Yeah. So like what made you transition to uh, really use a lot of loops instead of your own compositions? I mean, I like to just keep a balance of both because like yeah. a lot of times like the Martians or QBs, they'll send me some fire shit. So yeah. why not fuck with it? Why not why not add some drums to it or something? So you know what I'm saying? I definitely see a lot of people that are against it, but I mean, it's, I feel like it's kind of like a new wave of production because like three years yeah. ago, there was no loops floating around or nothing like that. But now I get loops every day to my email. So mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I fuck with it. It definitely, yeah. Like you said, right? Like three, four years ago, like it was super talked down on the use yeah. loops, right? Uh, yeah. I feel like a couple years ago, people didn't even like collabing like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was a little different, but. When you, when you use a loop, what kind of percentage do you give that producer for just using a loop? I break everything down even no matter what. Really? Yeah, I don't care what, what you do on the beat. Mm. Even if you bought the loop pack or do you not buy loop I don't pack? buy loops, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I just work. I just like, if people send me something, I'll just add to it. And we bust it down even every time. Because if not, it gets tricky. Like, I don't even want to be like, I did more than you, so we're going to do 40-10. Like, mm. I don't know, it just get weird. Yeah. I'd rather just go 25-25. Now, do you only typically work with people you already got a relationship with? Or, like, if a, f- a fan wants to send you something on IG, you, how does that work? Normally, it's people that I know, like, Q Beats or the Martians or something yeah. like that. But as of lately, I've had some people send me some dope shit that I'm like, oh, yeah. Keep sending more. So mm. I'm definitely open to working with new producers, that are like, all the time. What producer would you say that you learn from the most working with? Hmm. That's a good question. Probably Deco. I think Deco definitely taught me a lot of mixing tips that I still use daily. So, you can share one. I was gonna say any gems you could share. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's better to show than to just like explain. I don't want to, you know, what I'm saying show them with like FL up mm-hmm. on the screen or something. What do you do with your master channel? Uh, I put like a. I don't know if I should tell. I mean, it's in Maximus, but you know, what I'm saying I put it like on a certain level of the master, like on the rack and stuff. And like, I use like a preset on it. So it's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't just put Maximus. It's not going to sound the same. Right, so right. I don't even want people just trying to like throw Maximus on their master track and thinking it's going to make it sound better. Yeah. Cause it ain't going to sound right, but you got to do it the right way. Yeah. You know? Now that's surprising. You said that cause most, a lot of producers come out here. They say they don't do nothing. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just started doing it like a year ago. Oh, okay. My homie Smash David showed me how to do it. So mm-hmm. what's the difference? Is it just the lo- the loudness that you see the differences or does it actually make things knock a little bit harder? Yeah, I think if you mix if you mix right with it, like you have to mix things a little differently when you put it on there, but it definitely like 
it makes me feel like it's like knocking a little more. Do you mix it after? Will you mix it differently after you put it on or before you? Put Not it before, on? for sure. Before, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's really like the last step. Yeah. No, I was like the first, like as soon like really, I want to put it as soon as I open FL up. I want to put it right there because like if you try to put it on after you've made the beat, you're gonna have to remix the whole beat mm. once you know what I'm saying. Once you put the preset on, mm. so yeah. yeah. I got a good question from you for for you from start to finish. What's the longest amount of time you'll spend on a beat, and what's like the shortest time you spent, mm. like on a, from a start to finish, like final mix, everything? Well, like if it's like some EDM shit, <laughs> days, weeks, yeah, months, like yeah. I've been working on some shit for so long. Yeah, but like some trap shit, shit, ten minutes. It really just depends. Ten minutes and it's out. Yeah, it can be if it's like some yeah. simple shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Will you when you um make the EDM? Will you go? Will you switch into another DAW like use Ableton or will you stay using uh, FL? I want to learn how to use Ableton, but all my EDM stuff I've done so far is on FL. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now talk to us about the EDM stuff. That's what you do with your your group merge, right? Yep. That's the kind of talk to us about how that even came about and what, what it's about. Yeah. We were just like making so much EDM stuff, and we just had to like figure out a way to like package it together. But we got a lot of music coming. Like we got songs with like. Yachty Rich Kid on it like there's it a lot EDM. of stuff but we just want to drop it like when it makes sense mm. so, so when yeah. you say EDM what kind of EDM are you talking are you talking like EDM like um, Carnage type EDM or are you talking like EDM yeah. like you know, Rave type EDM yeah. like there's so many different genres yeah. but we don't really have names for them yeah I mean I don't really want to put us in a box like that because there's so right. many different types but if I had to pick one I would say Future Bass oh, okay. like you know what I'm saying like Major Lazer Cold Water type vibes oh, okay. like okay. more so like Pop. I feel yeah. like I was like Chinese. Music. I don't even no, know. No, Major Lazer. Yeah. Major yeah. Lazer. Yeah. I've heard of Major Lazer. I can't say I heard of his music, though. Oh, yeah. And then no, what no, you said, Diplo. Future. future. He's a, it's a group. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I heard of Diplo. Yeah. I thought that was one person, though. Yeah, Diplo's one person, but Major, Major Lazer, Lazer is oh, his group with two in. other people. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who are some other of your favorite artists? Like, like electronic EDM, music? Yeah, in the EDM scene. Um, I like Carnage. I like a lot of stuff Marshmallow does, Slushy. Um, Louis the Child. It's a lot of people. Who do you feel like was killing it in 2018? Who do you think was the number one? Marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. And you got some work with him, right? Um, no, nah, I've sent I sent him a couple ideas because we did Wild Out together. So oh, I met show. him for the first time, yeah. Okay. But now what do y'all what do y'all got planned for are we gonna see y'all at these festivals, DJing? Like what do y'all really got planned? Yeah, we're just trying to focus on the music right now. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get like a full set ready and all that, but definitely. Yeah. When my manager lets me know <laughs> it's time. And is this something you're doing within the QC branch or is nah, it it's completely totally separate. different? Yeah. Are there any label attachments or all? No, nah, not yet. Mm. Yeah, we're just working. Mm. So how are you able to separate the two? Is there like, because I don't, I mean, I don't really understand, like, try to help, help me understand how, what does it mean to be signed? And then what does it mean to be able to go and create your own thing and start moving under a different, under merge? Like, how are you able to do both and keep them separate? Well, that would be like my artistry. So okay. you don't say you can sign the deal as a producer, but okay. that's like my artist side. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. That makes sense. Mm. Um, now we seen you were invited to the Dreamville uh revenge sessions. Yeah. Um what were the what was like the vibe like at those sessions? It was dope. It was so many producers and that's what I heard. artists and stuff. Like it was like I don't know. It was a dope experience though. Like I heard it was a little overwhelming. Yeah. It was like five producers in different rooms. Like it was just like a lot going on, but I cooked up a lot of stuff and I was cooking up and J. Cole walked in the room and he was like, oh, that's hard. Like, But I never really got to sit down and play him any beats or anything. Yeah. But I definitely cooked up with a lot of dope producers. Mm. Seems like J. Cole's kind of leading like a whole new wave of like, I don't know what it is, but just the whole revenge thing, having all these producers to come up. It created like this, almost like this whole event or like a buzz around the whole, uh, all these producers pull up because J. Cole's in the building, like yeah. J. Cole's in town. Yeah, so That's many people wild. was pulling up. Even artists, like even artists that weren't signed to Dreamville, like was pulling up. Like it was a lot of stuff going on. I feel like that was a uh, that was great marketing from the jump. Like yeah, he's definitely. using the work session as marketing. Like you know, obviously when y'all get those things, y'all gonna repost them and everything exactly. like that. Like that's definitely smart marketing. Yeah, everybody was so excited. Right, right. It's like artists throwing their own little little events, pretty much. It's yeah. like a in like a producer creators like event, really. Yeah. 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 That's fire. Now is J. Cole like what, what kind of artist do you typically listen to? Like what's what's like your go to? I mean, I really listen to everything. Like I already had a relationship with uh Jid, so like we already been working. So I definitely like, you know what I'm saying, the more lyrical type of music. Yeah. And then clearly the trap shit, like with the Migos and all that. Yeah. So 
I really can't even say I have a favorite genre, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably say R&B. Mm. R&B, really? Yeah. Mm. And like, who are some of your, the R&B artists you fuck with? Uh, Party, mm. Jeremiah, Ty Dolla Sign, Jacquees. Mm. We've been doing a lot of stuff. And it's a lot of people, really. I feel like R&B is making a comeback this year with LMA and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. It's a dope time. Who are some artists that you got your eye on for the, to make some noise this year? Up and coming, not? Up and coming? Uh, I've been working with an up and coming artist uh, named Malachi. He's an R&B singer. You know what I'm saying? Then I got like a lot of independent people that I fuck with. My homie McNeil. He's about to drop his first tape. And then like a lot of the people in, signed to QC. You know what I'm saying? That's just getting they foot in the door like Collision. Collision. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep your eye out for them too. Yeah. What's Lil Baby got in store this year, man? I don't know. He dropped so many tapes and all the songs be hard. Who even knows? All right. <laughs> he just be going crazy. Uh, yeah. You got yeah. some work coming with him? Uh, we ain't locked in in a minute, but we definitely got some songs. Mm. I got a crazy song with him, Gucci, and Quavo, but I don't know when it's dropping. Or, mm. you know. I had a question. Um, um, when it comes to mixing, what artists or what genres should producers who are just now starting to really listen to to know what a uh, like a premium mix sounds like? Premium. <laughs> premium mix. <laughs> not, not just a you good know, mix, a like, premium mix. Man, these days, I, I don't know. Like These trap beats, you really ain't even got to have no crazy mix on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, a lot of the songs I have are, like, a two-track mix. Like, Walk It, Talk It, I ain't saying no stems for that. Like, Well, even mm-hmm. outside, okay, let's say even, out, like, a producer who wants to make R&B tracks, like, what mm-hmm. artist should they go and listen to and be like, yo, this is how you make a right, like, this is the best mix I've heard? Um, I mean, stuff that sounds really good to me, like, her, mm-hmm. her music, her, her yeah, stuff her always sounds crazy. really good. Not yeah. crazy. <laughs> he said her stuff sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's always confusing to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, she has like had like so much space. That yeah, her exactly. space, the atmosphere is crazy. It's just like a crazy vibe. Was she like a Lana Del Rey or something like that? It's like I nah. say, it's like an Erica Badu and Adele mixed together, kind of. Yeah, that's a, but that's a new wave though. Yeah. Like, mm. she's or dope. like trap beats, trap drums and stuff. On some of the songs, yeah, some yeah. of them, yeah. Some of them is like contemporary R and B type stuff. Mm. Yeah. There's one song. It's called like a Letter to My Mom or Mama or something. And I heard that song. I almost started crying. Shit, <laughs> that song was so, bro. It's so good. Crazy. I'm telling you, it's like hit you in your heart. It hit you in your heart. With the, with all the pop artists and everyone kind of like tapping into the trap song, you know, obviously that's been going on for like the, like past four to ten years. You know what I mean, slowly, but now it's like all the way like pop trap is pop. Do you feel like there's been a slowdown in progression of the of the genre? I mean, I wouldn't say it's slow down. Like, I think it's dope. Like, I, that uh, Meant to Be record with B.B. Rexa in um, Florida Georgia Line, like, that's like a country song, but it has trap drums in it. Like, <laughs> which one is that? Man, you got to check it out. Ago? It's from last year, but it's mm. dope. I think I do. Yeah. I know Florida Georgia I, Line. Like, I know I they have all a song. the time. Oh, for real? But yeah, they got a song together, and it's literally like just hearing it, like it was dope to me because it's literally like a country trap beat. Like, that's what I would. That's, that's fire. fire. I heard the one with Nelly, Florida Georgia Line, and Nelly. No, I ain't heard that's that. That's not one. that one. You don't know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I was a minute ago. That's what, thought, that's what I thought you guys were talking about. But no, like, I think it's dope. Like, I feel like urban music is definitely becoming like the new pop music. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm. Definitely agree with that. So how much should a producer expect to make off a song that goes platinum or like a number one billboard hit? Uh, it's a, tr- a tricky question. It depends if you did it by yourself. You know what I'm saying? It depends the percentage you have on the song. Yeah. What, so. what percentage should a producer expect initially? 50%. If you made it by yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, from there, like two people, 25, three, 16.7, whatever. Like, and it just goes down, but... You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have their own ways of doing it. Like I said, like some people, if they got a loop, they might be like, oh, I'll take 40, you take 10 since you just sent the loop or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it just depends. And now that, I'm always confused. Like when people say like 50%, that's not 50% of the sales and streams, is it? Yeah, you get 50% of the song in general. For anything, the everything. master and everything? Uh, I, w- I can't speak on the master side. I don't know about that. That I'm might th- be a little different. Isn't the master the sales? I don't know. Yeah. I'm talking about mechanical. Not mechanical. <laughs> no, go, ahead. Yeah. Nah, go ahead. Nah. It's mechanical royalties, which is just as far as sales go. So you get points on it. I thought yeah. mechanicals were the radio play. No. Nah. You, no. you get a separate mechanical, mechanical royalty that's, check. That's publishing. Yeah. That's publishing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you're talking about. He gets 50% of publishing, and when he gets played on radio or sings and stuff like that, he gets right. 50%. 
And then so, mechanical. So okay. if like 2K wants to put the song on there. That's the same. Yeah. And then so you get 50%. And then the artist will. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Hmm. So a writer will get the 50, get a percentage of what um, the artist gets, not of what the producer, producer gets. gets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. That's yes. what I have a manager for. Right. <laughs> right, right. She can't even clear it up. Hell yeah. <laughs> we got to get her on for a segment. <laughs> and, for, and for a producer that wants to know more about this, what should they be looking up? Like, is there anywhere, like, anywhere they should confine this information where it's, like, really clear? Um, you can get a good manager. You can get a good attorney. Or a book. Or, that you, or yeah, book. you can just ask questions. I forgot um, what it's all called. All about the music business. Yeah. All about the music business. It's a book? Mm-hmm. All I don't know what it's about. Actually, yeah. It's have like it. light blue, though. Yeah, I have it. Light blue and color. Now, how did you... Oh, how did you find your manager? How did that come about? Um, well, you know, she was managing Skip of the Flipper at the time, okay. who was a QC artist, you know what I'm saying? So I just kept seeing her, you know what I'm saying? I already had a manager, Steve-O, and they were already cool. So then she started helping me out with a lot of the stuff I was doing. So then we just all came together and just made sense. So her and Steve-O, he used to manage OG Mako. They mm-hmm. both managed me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's one or two things... That she does for you, like you couldn't live without her doing. As a manager, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. She does like everything for me, like. For real. Yeah. That's not a good enough answer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. Yo, no, give us one thing. What's what's one thing that was like? Oh, now that I got a manager, that's so much easier. Or I mean, that gets I don't, handled personally. Quick. I don't like to handle business. Period. With an artist, like I don't ever want to like hit up an artist and be like, yo. Um, I didn't get my advance for the beat. Like, okay. so that's where, you know what I'm saying? Mm. She comes in, she hits mm. up their manager. Like, I feel like it's always best for a producer to stay out of the business side. Really? Let them, yeah, let the manager say, like, don't ever hit up an artist and be like, bro, I didn't get paid that's for the beat. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's never a good idea. But it's a different vibe when, like, an outside. Yeah, if your manager hits their manager, you'd be like, I mean, that's my manager. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know bro. She, wants to, she wants to get paid too. She yeah, wants to get paid. We, just, we make music, bro. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At what point did you feel like you needed to get a manager? Yeah. Um, I don't know. People always ask me that, like up and coming producers, like mm-hmm. when do, like, should they get a manager? I mean, if you're not getting any placements, I really don't really see a reason to, unless the manager is going to help you get placements. Like mm-hmm. if the manager knows artists and stuff like that, like she has her own relationship with artists that I don't even know yeah. and she can send my beats to them. So if you find a manager like that, then anytime really, yeah. if you got some hard beats and you know that the problem is getting your beats to the artist, it might be time to find a manager. Mm. Cause I feel like that's, I feel like that's the number one thing. Like a lot of the people that ask us like from our, uh, you know, IG and stuff, they ask yeah. us like about getting managers. I think that they assume that the manager is there to to find placements for them and stuff. Nah, you gotta do that yourself too, though. But they they can help, definitely. So, for for upcoming producers, how do these producers actually um, make their brand make their brand have more value so they can link with these artists? Uh, I mean, I don't know. You just gotta brand is definitely important. So I guess you just gotta like. Make it look like you're working, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, like, every day, like, I don't know, like, I used to just post myself in front of my keyboard all the time, like, so everybody yeah. knew I was making beats. Yeah. Then, if anytime I had an opportunity, like, let me see you some beats, like, yeah, even if they were up and coming, like, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta give it a chance, you never know who's gonna blow up, yeah. So, I don't know. So, so image, yeah, definitely, yeah. that's definitely important these days. Let me ask you something, uh. Because a lot of times we ask a lot of producers about the power of having jewelry and the importance of having jewelry. Mm-hmm. Now, you're a producer that has jewelry. Mm-hmm. Was there a noticeable difference the day you started posting pictures with jewelry and stuff like that versus the day before? Uh, yeah, I mean, I will say, you know what I'm saying, clearly people are going to treat you different if they see that you have jewelry on and stuff yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? And you're posting the pictures with the QC chain, you know what I'm saying? People be like, oh, that shit's dope. Yeah. But I mean, I know a lot of producers that don't give a fuck about that type of shit and got dumb money. Like, man, still make hits all the time. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's something you need, but it probably helps when it comes to branding. Mm. Mm. I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand that. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to get into uh, the random questions? Sure, let's do it. So we just basically got a segment on here. It's called Random Questions. Literally just ask you random questions. So on our first uh, question we got is, when's the last time you watched a tutorial? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, probably like two weeks ago, I was watching a tutorial on uh how to make this synth I was trying to make for this e- this EDM song. Mm. Yeah. 
Is that where you got found like a lot of the majority of your learning, especially early in the in your career, was watching tutorials? Definitely from cooking up with people and watching tutorials. That's how I learned everything. What about cooking up with people is better than watching tutorials? I mean, just them being hands on and being right there and showing you like you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Watching it on YouTube, it's a little different. Mm-hmm. You got to kind of like watch it, then figure it out yourself. Be like, oh, wait, what is he doing? Let me rewind. Yeah, exactly. Like, I got you. All right. What's your favorite VST? Um, Omnisphere. Mm. Second favorite. <laughs> yeah. What's your second favorite? Oh, Contact. Contact? Yeah. What's the most underrated VST? Expand 2, I think. That's the dollar one, right? That's the one that costs a yeah, dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit's fire. Mm. So, all right. What's your favorite meal? Meal, bro. I really like barely eat. Like, I don't eat shit. I eat like chicken tenders and cheeseburgers <laughs> and pizza. <laughs> I don't eat nothing else. Mm. Who's got the best pizza in Atlanta? Shit, maybe Fellini's. Whoa. Fellini's. Mm-mm. Maybe. I'm not gonna take I that have one. Yeah. I have <laughs> take two days ago. I was so disappointed. For real? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna take that one. I don't know. Da Vinci's is straight. You ever had roses? Mm-mm. <sighs> Little Azios? No. On North Side Drive? I don't fuck with that. Gino's? I had Gino's. <laughs> <laughs> Gino's? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't like Fellini? <laughs> Damn. Uh, we already asked this one, but what's your favorite scale to use? Your yeah. personal favorite scale? C sharp minor. C sharp mm-hmm. minor? Yeah. And then I always ask this question. If you. We're going to fight a grizzly bear <laughs> or a silverback. Which one would you prefer to fight? Grizzly bear. What the? F- so you think a silverback is scarier than a grizzly bear? Yeah. We've had, yeah, we've had, sure. we, we've had nobody yeah. that's gone on our side with the uh, grizzly bear. <laughs> right? um, Who would you rather fight? I don't know. All you got is a, a spear. <laughs> A dull spear. A dull spear? What do y'all think? I mean, I would rather fight a gorilla because a grizzly bear is like 12 feet tall, about 1,500 pounds. He got claws and he got teeth. Well, given the original question, the original question is who who would win in a fight, a a grizzly bear or a silverback? Oh, I thought you said, who would you rather? Yeah, he switched yeah. it up. But the original question, it's like an internet question that's out there, uh, is who would win a grub? That's a good question. Grizzly or a silverback? I mean, that's, that's a long fight. I don't know. That's a good fight, though. <laughs> I'm taking like, silverback. Bro, because a grizzly bear is just like a silverback, but he got claws. <laughs> Where's you going to do is just get clocked with a punch. I don't, I don't think know. we're ever going to get... Uh, I don't think this is the one we'll never find <laughs> we'll out. We'll never yeah. find common ground. We'll never any, find common ground. <laughs> yeah. With any of our um, guests, man. But... uh. Two man, appreciate you pulling up, bro. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. And most definitely. All right, man. All right, man. Another episode in the books, man. Hit that subscribe. Peace.